just watched a sizzling, <laughs> sizzling speech by uh, Rob Harsoff at the Biz News, some Biz News investment conference, I think, in Cape Town. Um, Rob Harsoff, I believe, is the grandson of uh, Uherzoff, I don't know his grandfather's name, who along with Manel owned Angloval, big mining company uh, in South Africa, of course. Uh, Rob comes from serious money, <laughs> very importantly. He left South Africa to and study overseas. Uh, he then um, worked for Rupert Murdoch, who's a media mogul, uh, owns Fox and a couple of other media houses. Uh, worked for Johan Rupert, uh, I think, under Richmond, the luxury goods uh, company. Um, and he's come back to Africa and South Africa to try and, and invest and rebuild the country, so, so to speak. 24, 25 minute speech, you can find it on, on YouTube. Um, Madiba would have voted for the DA if he was alive, I think is the, is the title of that video. And he makes a lot of points. First thing I want to highlight is um, the Harrisoff Manel family gave a piece of their minds to a well-known family called the Motsipes. Augustine Motsipes, Patrice Motsipes' father, and the first family member to go into mining was the daughter, Bridget Motsipe, who's married to a minister, Jeff Khadeb, in South Africa. Um, and then, obviously, Patrice Motsipe famously got a, a chunk of anglo -Val, which he converted into African rainbow minerals, which is responsible for his $2 to $3 billion worth. You know, So as far as some of us are concerned, the Harrisoff and the Manel families are the handlers of the Motsipe families. I don't know how far they still handle them to this day. I think there was a lot of arranged marriages and those things going on to consolidate power. Cyril Ramaphosa left his wife to marry a Mutsipe lady as well, uh, Utsepo. Jeff Khadeb was a minister in the presidency, married Bridget Mutsipe. And then we know Patrice uh, Mutsipe as well, who's married to Precious. It's the first thing I want to highlight. The second thing I want to highlight is um, Rob speaking about South Africa being uninvestable. And he explains why. Rob Arasov obviously comes from money and he's speaking for rich, wealthy, white people. Something that a lot of black people have not learned to this day, to focus on their agenda. Rob is not worried about the agenda of the poorest black person because he's not a poor black person. In the same breath, a poor black person shouldn't worry about the agendas of rich white people because they will clash, obviously. You know, so unashamedly, unapologetically speaks for rich whites, which he should speaks about how South Africa is uninvestable and then explains how the ANC is a, pun a bunch of rubbish and anyone who votes for the ANC is an idiot. One of the things he says is that our ministers are absolute idiots and he references Figil and Balula, which is true. And I've said this before, that our government, our politicians, like any other politician in the rest of the world, are just puppets. They're puppets for the biggest taxpayers. They are puppets for global players like the UN, the World Health Organization, uh, the World Economic Forum, the IMF, the World Bank. Sil Ramaphosa is just a head puppet. He's like, it's like a chairman of a governing body at a school or like a, a head boy in a school. He's just been put there to maintain order. His mandate is to take taxpayers' money, make sure that infrastructure is working, give some of the money to poor blacks so that they do not revolt, and then make sure that the laws remain in place so that the rich remain rich and they can keep paying tax and keep paying him for his campaigns to remain in power. Rob Arasov speaks about how Cyril shouldn't have won, how NDZ, Kosa Zanetlamini Zuma, should have won. But Cyril went and made a deal with, and I quote, the devil, David Mabuza. Um, and we don't know what he promised to David Mabuza, who's been relatively quiet, you know, ever since he became deputy president. He says Cyril Ramaphosa is not a savior. Um, and even though Cyril was voted for and things, were, things have been alleviated, he says it's just buying time. He believes Jacob Zuma and his family and his people are just thugs. Calls them scumbags. Says that's even uh, <laughs> says that's even uh, disrespectful to normal scumbags. Says Dutuzan is a, is a criminal. Says black empowerment is, is theft. Uh, land expropriation without compensation is theft. Obviously, because he's a rich white, he's not going to speak about how the apartheid government um, used laws to push black people off their land. He's not going to speak about colonialism. He's not going to speak about the atrocities of white people in history. He's not going to speak about black exploitation that built the wealth that his family and other families got to build. Because he doesn't care about that. You know, that kind of makes sense. He mentioned Musi Maimane, who Tony Leon, ex-leader of the Democratic Alliance, the DA, called an, ex an experiment and a failed experiment. Calls Musi Maimane our dear friend. And he references along with Musi Maimane that future leaders will be Musi, Herman Mashaba, 
and he even mentions Uvusi Tempeguayo. And I've been thinking lately that ever since Uvusi got off Twitter from making noise on Twitter, I think he has been captured by white money in the Western Cape. I believe he now sits on the board of Silicon Cape, which was start, uh, founded by guys like Justin Stanford, who was funded by Johan Rupert. Justin Stanford uh, used to go to the same high school as uh, Johan Rupert, being Paul Ruiz Gymnasium in the Western Cape. I think he dropped out of school in grade 9 to focus on building tech businesses. A um, couple of other big tech guys are, are involved in Silicon Cape. Robert Arswap loved flexing. If you ever watch his interviews uh, on YouTube, he loves flexing about who he knows, how famous he is, how rich he is. I appreciate it uh, because I get to learn a lot when guys are honest. A lot of the old money guys are very quiet. They're very diplomatic. They keep their thoughts to themselves. But guys like Rob sounds like an American rapper who flexes. He sounds like new money. I, I love tracking new money because new money normally gives us a lot of clues about what's happening in the game. If I've just made money in tenders, if I've just made money in, in mining, there's a lot of intel that's still new to me and I'm still comfortable to speak about. A lot of the old money guys don't speak. They keep quiet. They're diplomatic. They'll say things like, look, not really happy with that, what's happening in politics. I think the economy is under strain, etc., etc." Rob uses words like idiot, moron, bullshit. You know, he speaks about how a lot of the degrees in the arts and especially political sciences are not real degrees and they're a waste of fucking time. You know, he says people should be studying STEM subjects, science, technology, economics. I forgot what the M stands for. It might be medicine, I'm not sure. Those are real degrees. Accountants, lawyers, engineers, um, etc. And everyone else is kind of wasting their time. He says high schools and primary schools should be focusing on the three R's. Uh, reading, writing, arithmetic. I know there was a joke at some point that writing is with a W. When Angie Mutsikha mentioned it, that people were saying that she, she can't spell which is actually not true. It's, it's a very popular term, the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, he said people should be focusing on that. Everything else is kind of noise. South Africa will not be rebuilt if our economy collapses. And I've agreed with that because the world is run by white people and white money and white monetary systems. We don't need our economy to collapse like Zimbabwe to see that. Go to the rural areas, go to townships, go to squatter camps. You'll see how black people that don't have money, you'll see black people that don't have white businesses and white tax money you will see that how they live and then you will decide from there if that's how you want to live your life as well you know because that's that's what will happen in south africa as time goes on if our economy collapses so that's very very important rob goes on to flex about all the billionaires he's met on the continent he says he's met probably 85 of the richest uh, 100 people on the continent he mentions south africans names who are dollar billionaires who don't live in south africa he mentions a few that live in South Africa and he says living in South Africa currently is insanity. And even he himself says he thinks he's a bit crazy for being here and for investing in, a Cape Ta in, a, in an airport in Cape Town and for trying to build a stock market in Cape Town. There's currently a plan to make Cape Town independent, to make it an independent state. Uh, Afri Forum has now joined the fight. Uh, they're going to the Constitutional Court to see if they can push this process to make Cape Town or the Western Cape an independent state. Uh, Kudwil Zuelitini, the king of the Zulus before he passed away, had threatened to fight to make KwaZulu Natal an independent state, but he didn't really kick off the process. And again, we're being schooled by white people who are organized, Afrikaans people who are organized, who are using the courts, who are using global institutions. Afri Forum has been inducted into the United Nations. They are now recognized. They are using formal white channels to fight the way they always have for what they believe is right and what they believe will make the country better black people by and large are not learning the lessons we're too distracted political noise what's trending on twitter um, what's trending on mocha love we are jola 99 what's happening in america hashtags like black lives matter etc black people are not number one segmenting we're not the same as blacks break us up into separate groups and have those separate groups have their own leaders and their own agendas and then from there get the blacks who are into manufacturing Get the blacks who are into uh, farming. Get the blacks who are into building new religious structures, building new schooling systems, you know, inventing things. Get black people that are traveling all over the world to go and build black communities, just like the Jews and the Muslims and the Chinese do. Build black communities across the world and make sure that you're building things like China cities and China malls in other parts of the world if you are organized. And don't fight. Nelson Mandela understood this thing of white domination and black domination. White domination is what made white people look bad 
across the world and what led to sanctions. The Oppenheimers, the Ruperts, uh, other important families were called to the table by the people that run the world and told, you guys are embarrassing us, do something about it. They obviously called F.W. de Klerk and the National Party and said, look, something needs to happen. We're being sanctioned and we can't do business. That's where they needed a black face that made sense. They found Nelson Mandela who came angry, but they calmed him down and they explained exactly how the world works. They took him to the World Economic Forum and that's how he became softer and started saying, look, nationalization, we need to pocket and other things. But in the negotiation, he said, look, to calm black people down, something needs to happen. We need to give them something. There came RTP houses. There came grants. There came affirmative action, which graduated to become black economic empowerment today. Obviously, once again, with BEE, the, the white people handpicked the blacks they wanted to work with. Sil Ramaphosa, Saki Matozoma, Mzi Kumalo, a couple of other names that are involved. There are two females that I forget. I don't know if Daphne Kors is one of them. There's another female doctor. I forget her name, but she was also handpicked, along with a couple of other guys. You know, white people picked these people. Today, again, obviously, white people feel the country is, is gone to shit. They believe that the ANC uh, has collapsed the country. And look, they have a leg to stand on because if you look at what the ANC has done with SOEs, the SABC, SAA, what's happened at ESCOM, etc., it's from, from black leadership. But it's because the blacks are not being backed by whites because th these same white people that are complaining, they get the biggest tenders in these SOEs. But South Africa was never built for the masses. It was built for a white minority. That's how they could thrive and live like kings in this country. And to this day, even when you listen to Rob Hersoff, what I thought, and I posted this on Twitter as well, is what white people want in this country is they want black people to behave. Go to school and study hard. Go to church and be a good Christian. Be a good employee. Don't steal. Don't commit crime. If you're poor, if you're a poor black, be at peace and be thankful with any freebies that white people through the tax and the government give you. If you're a talented, educated black, white people will then elevate you. They'll make you a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or an accountant so that you can sit on their table. And if you speak their language, which is the language of money, which goes through the South African Reserve Bank, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, all the way to the biggest stock exchanges in the world and the Central Bank of London and all these other places, white people are comfortable to make you a front. Like a Sir Ramaphosa, like a Musi Maimani, like a Patrice Mutsipa. You are a black person who plays according to white rules and makes sure that white people remain strong and powerful. Aliko Tangote is allowed to be the wealthiest black man on the continent because the way he operates is like a rich white person. White people get to invest in Tangote, the Tangote group, either on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or through the London Stock Exchange. And nothing that Aliko does uh, breaks white wealth. Nothing that he does goes against the way that the American dollar runs the money system across the world. This is the world we live in. And I was so happy listening to, to Rob say this stuff. Take time, watch the speech. It's 24 minutes, 25 minutes long. And let's engage. You know, these are conversations that those of us who are a bit smarter, who find ourselves to be philosophers in this new age, should be talking about. Don't make it black and white. Make it about good and bad people. Make it about rich and poor people and how we can make the world better. I still believe that a lot of poor people need to unplug from money, go back to villages, grow their own food, live in mud huts, and just have decent lives. And let the people that want to play the capitalist game win. Make it a minority game. 30%, 40% of the population should be playing in money. The rest should be living. Very, very simple subsistence, uh, subsistence farming life and living. That's what will make the world a better place. Great interview and I wish I could engage a bit more on it, but I'll stop, I'll stop there and maybe I'll make another video uh, at some point when I've, when I've listened to the video again because it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Robert Arsoff was dropping bars like a rapper. Huh? Anyways, it's Penuel the Black Pen, about to do charity work in the Val in Didier, uh, my way of just giving back uh, in a way that I can to those that need it because we have some privileges that they don't have, so we'd like to share. Have a great Saturday. Hope you guys had a great Heritage Day which I call African Halloween. I hope you guys will have a great long weekend. Cheers.